Here we go, here we go, here we go. You have discretion advised. is Summer Game Fest, a live showcase of what's next in the wide, wide world of video games. We are live here in Los Angeles, and so whether you're streaming from home or watching inside an IMAX theater, welcome to our an showcase IMAX theater. event. Over so the next few hours, we'll give you updates on the games you love, be joined by special developer guests, and yes, have a few surprises along the way too. Now, what I love about this show is that it's a true cross-industry showcase. Whether you play on Xbox, PC, PlayStation, Switch, or mobile, we'll have games for you. It doesn't matter your platform of choice. We're all here to come together as one community that simply loves the art of amazing <laughs> video games. The biggest franchises in the industry are here, like over. Call of Duty. You'll get introduced to exciting new worlds and new teams, and we'll make room for small independent developers who we think deserve the spotlight too. If we do this right, Hopefully you'll discover a few new games to put on your wish list. And even if you don't get every announcement that you desire, and let's face it, you're not gonna get everything today, but we've got a lot of great stuff. So let's get started. Over 30 years ago, Capcom Street Fighter hit arcades. And ever since, this legendary Japanese fighting game series has continued to evolve. Street Fighter VI is coming in 2023 and right now, we're excited to officially confirm a character mm. coming to the game and show you the exclusive first gameplay footage. Enjoy. <laughs> the only thing I know about the Street Fighter game is like the whole logo debacle and then apparently butt physics. You so. what you. <laughs> Let me have some fun. Let's get this mission started. This will be a good fight. Got you in my sights. Neutralized. Yeah, sorry, I'm just like posting that I'm live and shit. I'm I'm so out of practice. Just on another level. That hair, Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's all about the comb. All right, next it's time for a brand new game announcement here at Summer Game Fest. Check this out. Check a look. That's still stuck in my mind. From what it all? I know they have uh, one that they're gonna be doing. Oh man. Sergeant Leo Alvarez of the CM Leth Recon Squad. Our mission was to enter the Tantalus base, locate the commsat relay, and bring it back online. We found the relay, but there was a problem. Get that door closed now, Private. Close that, Close that gate. Nothing gets in here. Ray didn't make it. The least is a one piece. Willis, take the lead. Oh, this ain't good. There we go, posted. What we found was a new kind of evil. And it found us first. What the? This was a human. I 
right now. Okay, I'm gonna watch my stream. Go, go, go! Oh, no, practice so long. What is this? Ambly means? Wait a minute. Through that door. I wasn't paying attention. Damn it. Hold that door, Sergeant. Son of a Rude. I don't know what I saw in there. But I know when I close my eyes. I still see it. Now everyone's dead. The fuck? And someone needs to know. This like a full on fucking new game. Wait, is it top down? Fuck's sake. I mean, I might still give it a try because I love the Alien that series, was Aliens, but Dark Descent, oh. and it's coming in 2023 to console and PC. Next, two years ago at the Game Awards, we revealed the Callisto Protocol from the creative forces behind the Dead Space Hi, franchise. Yumi. Today, yeah, I don't I even know how good my audio is because something's wrong with OBS. Like, I think but I gotta look at it, but quote unquote, like, I can't record anything. New trailer with a little I seem to be gore. streaming just fine, but for some reason OBS is struggling with recording, so I don't know how good my audio quality is. As usual. But hi, Yomo. I'm guessing your work, maybe, possibly. Take a look outside. Pretty sure you work today. Did you know work? that they call Callisto the Dead Moon? Dead. <laughs> Just like you would have been if I hadn't fished you out of that wreck. Have so we already seen this? You're holding on to right there. Didn't they even show this your off? Old life. You gotta let that go. I mean, I'm interested because these are like entirely. I'm pretty sure I heard this is like from some of the people that like did Dead Space. This is like a spiritual successor or something. I'm hyped for that. Like, I still have to. We still need to play <laughs> Dead Space uh, Three for the co-op, just for shits and giggles. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look it up to see like if there's any solution because I don't know what OBS is struggling with right now. Like like I said, the stream part. seems to be running fine. The only problems I've had so far with OBS is the uh, recording, so chills every time. I don't know how good my audio quality is gonna be, but I'm not gonna like worry about it. I'm just relaxing, watching some gore and mayhem. See if there's any drama this year. Welcome to your new home. That's right. We know what you wanted to see. And joining me now, Glenn Schofield, striking distance. Glenn, they literally, uh, but they literally all, showed this already. Congratulations. So, <laughs> this game looks. Absolutely I'm already hyped incredible. for it. I gotta say, the fact that you have built this um, team, oh, this studio, new IP, drink. shipping this you December, might hear this. all in oh, COVID, shit, I don't have nails. blows me away. Fuck. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks, man. You owe me. Uh, let me borrow your claws. Thanks for having us. I really do appreciate, it, Chef. Um, and you know, for a second, yeah, I'm definitely going to try this game because yeah, you know, I want to thank you. Even though I'm a big uh, chicken, I do love industry, like the horror uh, all these years, man. I, I think I've known you like 16, 17 <sighs> years now, and uh, um, you've been an ambassador. Um, you've amplified new games, don't, don't new studios, remind them how old and, he is. Uh, 
I, I just wanted to thank you. I really do oh, appreciate well, it. Thank you. It's not it's about not me, it's about nice. you guys. Yeah, I, I, I know, just had I it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And yeah, it's so fun to do <sighs> these shows and to show this game. So people saw the trailer, but what I'm so excited today is that you just brought a raw gameplay sequence. This game is in development and people are going to be blown away, I think, when they see it. But tell us a bit about what are we going to see today? Yeah, we got a couple okay. minutes of, uh, like you said, like raw gameplay. Um, it's two segments in the first half of the game. Uh, one is a med bay. Another one is a power station and you're going to see uh okay so they're showing more they, some they just wanted to some, start with the trailer again uh, just about everything we were showcasing a new uh, weapon called the grip okay. it's a uh, like a gravity gun but it picks up the enemies and it shoves v them into rising? giant fans it rips them apart What's v it's rising? Great. and uh and then check out the uh the nice ending we have where we uh you know we usually will kill our main character jacob yeah. and in a very unique way and uh, uh just for a second, I, I want to thank the team, man. Like you said, through COVID, through everything else, the dedication, the hard work, uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Glenn, I got to say, again, you know, what you guys are shipping this year, this looks like a world-class next-gen game. Uh, it's it's rare that teams are bringing something out like this oh, this year. Oh, that vampire. Let's like... let the footage speak for itself. Thank you. Let's go field. Oh, okay. Distance. Here it is, yeah, the I first gameplay of the but... Callisto Protocol. Yeah. How much is it? Hold on. I think I've seen some stuff. Oh, shh, shh, shh. captured on next gen hardware. Yeah, this is totally a spiritual successor to Dead Space. The vibes are strong. Right. Uh oh. That was the stream, not me. Oh, it's only like twenty bucks. That's not bad. Let's see how the um Okay. Boy's not bad then. <sighs> yeah, it looks pretty interesting. I mean, there's like so much shit we need to like play together. It's kinda overwhelming. We just need to like Just get started on playing one. Yeah. I guess before I forget, I should probably like wish list it or something so I don't forget to get it later. Cause that's not a bad price cause it's an early access and I'm guessing it just came out. Not that long ago. This is so... Oh my god. This is such a spiritual successor to Dead Space. It's it's wild. Like, I never thought I would actually see something like this. In today's market? Fuck that. Oh my god! Yes! That's fucking brutal. Oh my god. That just happened. You thought the, the right, modern Tomb Raider games this had This October, Call of Duty up, yes. Modern Warfare 2 arrived. They said, Infinity War is once beer. again returning to its roots for a modern day action game. And today we're about to show you the world premiere of its gameplay with a level playthrough. To tell us more, let's head to the port of Long Beach to check in with Johanna Ferris, the head of Call of Duty. Oh yeah, I heard about this. Hi, Fucking everyone. advertising in everywhere. In 2019, Modern Warfare changed everything. And on October 28th, we usher in a new era of Call of Duty with the launch of Modern Warfare 2. We are back, we are bigger, and we are bringing the entire team. Price, 
Gaz. Candle. So, I... Alejandro. <sighs> and of course, Ghost. Bigger doesn't we always mean better. Big enough to Isn't that the Call thing? Of Duty <laughs> way. I still haven't opened my drink, by the way. God damn, I get so distracted. Oil rigs, cargo ships, and staggering odds are just the beginning. But yeah, I know, Here Yomi, you said you can't, like, have it turned up too high or don't have your headphones or whatever. But can you, like, hear me okay? Like I can't. I have no way to check the sound on my stream right now. Like I literally have no way. Eyes in the red. That's our target. Shadows one and two. Push to your hook points. Let's invite ourselves. Like I'm literally just crossing my fingers, hoping for the best. We board. Clear. Disarm that missile. Be ready for anything. I might this end up playing this because <laughs> even though I'm not like a Call of Duty Doo's fan, I just never got into the, like the series. Um, I mean, I think I played the earlier ones, but I never became like obsessed with it. But um, I think I heard this one might end up on Game Pass, but I'm not sure. If it's on Game Pass, I'll, yeah, I'll fucking play it. I'll give it a shot. Maybe review it or something. Do like a quick review of it or something. But if it's not a game pass, I'm not. I'm not gonna like spend money on it that I don't have. The fucking steam map on here. What the? Where the fuck did it go? One, to the it disappeared. Stairwell. There it is. Scorers, right side. The fuck? It signed me out. Why? Why? Remembered my password. <clears throat> We're moving to the main deck. What's your status? I mean, it's always kind of hard to tell when it's a live stream because the video quality is always going to be a little funky. But I mean, it does look good. But... now okay D can you tell me how it sounds like can you hear me okay and the um summer game fest stream thing like is it balanced like as best as you can tell because i have i have no way to check my own stream right now like i am so out of practice Rising on my wish list, so hopefully I remember to get it. Clear. The stream audio might be a bit too loud. Seriously? On that damn ship. Actually, we got a problem. This is 
ship. You have your orders, son. Stop that <laughs> launch. Yeah, I'll turn it down a smidge then, just in case. Like I, like I said, I'm not too worried about it because I'm literally just getting back into streaming, so. Oh, also, like there's a, a Warframe drop, I think, that you can get from watching me. Like, it's basically anybody that's streaming uh, the Let's have ourselves a gunfight. summer game fest thing, Missile controls are on the I think. Bridge. If you have drops enabled, but there's like supposed to be like a suit or whatever, I think. All right, I'm sure. Turn it down a smidge. Can you tell any difference or nah? I'm moving! The cannons are the only cover we have. Just don't get caught between them. I still have an open my drink. <sighs> 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 If this is on Game Pass and I don't actually have to like buy it full price, like I will give this a shot because there's like a bunch of hype for this one apparently. I think, I think, don't quote me on that. Again, <laughs> not a Call of Duty person. Should be fine. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it. If you can hear me fine, Yomi, then I'm good. I'm not gonna stress over it. That's not too bad. Pre order now and get early access to the open beta. And when they say open beta, they really mean that's what we're talking. They want about. you to hey, test it. Joining for us them. now, up from Long Beach, Johanna. Great to see you. How's everything? It's great. Thanks. Uh, great to have you with us, and also Jeff from uh, Infinity Ward. So, we saw the first gameplay. Thanks for that <coughs> extended sequence. Looks incredible. Uh, Jeff, tell yeah, us a bit about like, uh, where is that mission. Yeah, if this is like, if this comes on Game, game Pass, absolutely. So, um, or if first I end up all, not having really to like buy it full price uh, for John some way, Price like, and. Uh, uh, if jazz, uh, for Derek, some reason um, someone gives it to me, which know, I highly they're doubt, not they're not actually in what we just saw today, but uh, <laughs> they're returning members from one for one. But and the uh, two characters, if this is uh, like on Game Pass or something, I would see me playing this, are, uh, Simon giving it Ghost a shot Riley's, just to see like what and, uh, all the course, fucking hype uh, is about. John McTavish. Um, and then a couple other new characters in here that we're really excited uh, that we got to uh, create for this game. Um, first, uh, Commander Philip Graves and uh, Mexican Special Forces uh, Colonel Alejandro. And Alejandro, I guess they were- Yeah, I don't know any really of the excited characters, about. so He's I don't care. super <laughs> capable and a guy uh, who's just uh, as important uh, as Task Force 141. Um, but as far as the level's concerned, um, you know, this, I, I got a shout out to, to IW. You know, this was a tremendous collaboration across all of the, the different uh, disciplines. As you saw, everybody coming together, some really uh, motivated devs here. And, uh, you know, you saw the, the wind and the uh, animations and the awesome sound design. And of 
of course, our new water tech, which is actually pushing the boat in different directions. It's creating a physically dynamic environment, allowing for the cover you were seeing in yeah, certain Yeah, if they actually to commit to a fucking cover, story. And then suddenly that cover would shift and leave you exposed, but it also leaves like, the enemy I, exposed. It's like, I know I've played like a couple of the um, Call so of Duties. I, again, I'm, I'm very excited. Just and can't I, wait. That, I'm so excited that we get to show it off actually today. Bought one. And that's just a hint of where things are going to go. Except uh, maybe back in the day on Steam when there was like a sale. Like, you know, when there's usually like a bundle sale of like different games. Across Call of Duty. What can we expect from you guys this year? Yeah. Uh, we, um, first of all, thanks for having us here. I We're think so anyway, excited for October 28th. It's such a big moment. Water not tech remotes in 64? And everything that Jeff and the team <laughs> is still, to say it, I'm really honestly not paying attention. <laughs> like I like, franchise. I don't know why, but at these things, whenever they, they come out to talk, all the things like, just I automatically itself, tune them out. On one shared engine now across Warzone and Modern Warfare 2 going forward. Of course, there's a lot of chatter and interest about the new Warzone experience. Yeah, if they commit to a fucking story, I'll play it. Um, there the will online be, mode, um, I don't know. A standalone experience. Of I'll probably for give it a try if I don't have to um, pay for it. As well, so we're going to sort of feed the entire for the low, low there, price of all eyes on the free. Um, and again, I think the collaboration has just been incredible. Everybody's so excited for Task Force One for One. Um, Warzone coming to mobile as well for players on the go. We're, we're on Steam, oh, as mobile. you know. I mean, so yeah. it's just a big moment, and there's going to be a lot more to come in the in the months. God, I'm still seeing shit well, pop up we, about we leave, uh, we gotta ask a little the bit latest about mobile. Warzone too. I know we just, you know, we're showing Fuck gameplay. Fest. This, but can you tell us uh, anything? Little, it seems like there was Diablo a little bit of a tease Mortal? maybe in the trailer yesterday. Yeah, God, when we're seeing that from the community, we love and I understand the why, because like, things, even though I never um, really some chatter about played the Diablo games, and, and other elements, but they've always looked interesting, and a lot of people, for sure. like, there's it a very big PC, especially fan base. So, all the more reason why we think this game and they just this fucked up with the mobile is, is shit. Important, uh, title for all of us. It looking, crashed. Looking God, the like news said, never stops with that game. The entire future for the franchise. So we're in. We're in like, uh, really excited. what's his right, name well, that I follow? October. Thanks Bit so much for giving us the first look at the gameplay. Uh, Call of Duty. Uh, his Warfare YouTube 2. name starts with a B, I think. Um, all right, well, we've Can't got pronounce lots it. More summer game fest still but like, and now it's time to like he's having news about it like every five minutes. It like, like he keeps posting a video after video. Video. I love this game when I and was he's growing getting up, pissed. so I'm honored to share this very first look. Player base crash? Oh shit. Yeah, you know, I heard about the 110k thing, and I also heard, um, I don't know if it's been confirmed, but that the 110k is actually closer to like 300. And I'm like, either one's bad. <laughs> oh my god, look at them pixels. Oh my god. Wait, I wasn't paying attention. What are we looking at? <laughs> I'm so bad at like watching this shit. Flashback 2? I didn't know there was a 1. What the fuck is flashback? Give you the robot. Alright, let's <laughs> turn back time. Back in 2017, we announced Witchfire at the Game Awards. Almost five years later, yeah, I, I heard so like I uh, watched like a couple of videos of some people that together an in -depth look at the like love the Diablo series and shit. And they and they said what's more sad about it is that like I am so the first part of it this. and the gameplay is fun to play, but it's like everything else just makes it shit. There's like. Some of the player base is just fucking pissed off, angry, and had enough. And then the other player part of the player base is just sad. Oh fuck, wait, what are we watching? It's interesting. Ooh, that transition, that was nice. I don't know what I'm watching, but I'm interested. I 
mean, so far I'm liking what I'm seeing, so. It has, oh shit, piqued my interest. Witchfire. So it's a new IP. Early access soon, wishlist now. Oh, is it only on the Epic Game Store? Okay, God next damn up it. comes an ambitious new game from a new independent studio in Europe starring some very familiar names. Enjoy this world premiere new game announcement. Officer Taylor Medlog, 29. Today, um, I can't believe what I saw. I'm gonna have to go back and like look over the games they've showed, like write down the ones I'm interested in. Solace. Everything okay in there? Cause I always forget shit until like it's almost coming out or it's already come out. And I'm like, what the fuck? Time is an illusion. Oh shit. Something is going on here. Obviously. And I need to find out what it is. Well, at least this one's on Steam. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but that's something brand new. And the, look who it the is. puppy is running around. Troy and oh, Roger fuck. In Why does the stream keep doing Guys, that? Uh, this is so fun. The fact that you're working on it. Ask you guys, uh, who are your characters in this game? Well, uh, I get to play a character named Wyatt Taylor, who's a medical officer who's stationed at this uh, base, Fort Solace. And uh, it's the epicenter of oh, this look, mystery Troy that Baker. we'll discover and uncover mm -hmm. as we go through the game. And of course, my character will be at times in opposition Shocker. with Roger's character. The battle we've been waiting to see. <laughs> Every once in a yeah, yeah. Oh man, we can't wait to show you what we've been working on. And by the way, Jeff, this looks awesome, man. Yeah, it's man. so <sighs> great to be here. Thanks for having us. I, it's, it's so great to be here. Another but game. We, I mean, it's feel like this is your summer first game fest. Sense. Seems to be yeah. kind of well, struggling. It. Either them or Twitch while. itself. And I play a character by the name of Jack Cause, um, Gary. He's a maintenance the stream. On a and like, I was watching other post. streamers yeah. for a while His before this. So I know. While it's on the it's not graveyard me. shift, the graveyard but, um, shift meaning Mars and Earth are really far apart like, from each other. When it was doing the countdown to when the so help is stream would start, uh, it I literally, ask, I, I think, think at like the three thing, minute mark wonder, or you know, it's a new somewhere team, around there, right? uh, the, the, the stream literally just in Europe that's making this, but with huge production was values, live and then went, nope, we're not live anymore. And then it came back on like a couple seconds later, but somewhere it was the first I mean, obviously on, we had this on Twitch event with the pandemic so. and that forced the way that we looked at it, everything as a society but also the yeah. way this industry functioned. I can see also that. brand new consoles. We had more tools that were being made available that were leveling the playing field. You think they'd be prepared like by now though because it's like the whole the AAA studios. they literally and advertise so, for else, doing watch parties out, and uh, shit. Tinsdale with this Especially ever since they, they, they to, did the whole uh, Amazon thing. being a part of this game and he walked me through a very brief description of what the experience was going to be like and in the very beginning, he said, "It's we want this to feel it's a it's a tight thriller. We want they it can't to feel say it's like a money issue space, anymore. <laughs> meets, uh, Duncan Jones. <laughs> they can't say that like, anymore. Sign me up. I'm into that absolutely. And full like performance. They, they're literally uh, owned by yeah, Amazon. Absolutely, new studio, brand new energy, and of course, I get to work with one of the best of the business. And me, I get the privilege. <laughs> Who's the other? Of getting to see this guy and watch him in action. Uh, I you know I love. Oh my to God! Work, Can we skip to this, please? Challenges and all the new innovations. It's the only problem watching these live. You can't, can't skip to, to the talk. I think it's gonna. Yeah, I guess I've seen some of the behind the scenes. And like the I, for, I get wanting to hype up your I mean, game and like being phenomenal. excited and wanting to talk about it. The gameplay, like, what are we gonna do in this game? Yeah, the verbs are always important. So we're gonna let the game speak for itself. We'll be showing you more later on. But uh, this is a game where you, as the player, you're going to be. Ex 
exploring, we're going to be discovering. Like we said, it's a very tight thriller. So you're moving very fast paced through this world. There'll be multiple locations, multiple ways for you to traverse, which we're excited to show you about. Uh, and then the the narrative is a huge element to this. The they they didn't I wonder waste, if they're uh, talking any, a lot because they don't have much too the, much the to show. For sure. I got to tell one quick story. Cuz like can, there's going to be um, other streams. Moments. Like um there is a lot of action in this game. Like and today, I know the, uh, the, the Devolver Digital is going to have and their thing. And then performance capture aspect, we brought next in couple of days, there's going to be like uh, Xbox the and on who walked us through Nintendo, and really approached this in a completely different way than anything I've ever done before. And he says, I want to know the story of Bunch this fight. Of other shit. And so Roger and I sat down. We said, these are who our characters are. And he goes, give me one hour and I will come back to you with the story of this that's fight. what i'm saying and like after an hour he comes to us and he goes then like they a, used like to do that program it was 12 steps it's like and sometimes they'll do that sometimes they won't where it's like fight. just trailer out, after preview after game and i was like hey man i just want you know i've got no ego it's about like this, but i can do a lot of things but i, I can't if there's a trailer or a teaser says, they'll show oh, it you will and then if there's like a gameplay thing they'll show that like right after a lot of trust and it worked out yeah I mean, and then they'll just like do it through all the games they have to show off and all the announcements and then at the end it's like an after party thing where like the the devs and and well next up keeping up with the space theme the people that want to talk about the game have like a sit down a musical score by industry legend Mick Gordon this one is going to grab you, and we are so honored to debut it. Ooh, what the fuck? I'm not going to lie, that first little clip kind of freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> I'm glad it's still daylight out. <laughs> Fuck. The fuck is this? Oh shit. Whatever this is, if I play it, I, nope. I would have to have like a tremendous amount of alcohol or high to play this by myself. What the fuck? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Routine? That ain't my routine. <laughs> no. <gasps> game Pass. It might come on Game Pass. Fuck. That means I'm <laughs> on Game that Pass. Pass. I won't have that any was excuse. <laughs> to Xbox and PC. It was first announced a decade ago and is now officially back. I can't wait to see. Yeah, more. we do need to do like now it's time to check in with a very parties, like... special guest who's been in his fair share of video games, including most recently Fortnite as the foundation. Dwayne Johnson, welcome to Summer Game Fest. How are you? That reminds what's me. Up, everybody? Oh God! Here he, is. Here he is. Here he is. What is up? To Figured he would have showed up for the Summer Xbox. Audiences live streaming right now around Cause him and the Xbox world, like and everybody inside the <laughs> have had this <laughs> relationship Wayne since Johnson back here, when he had hair. From my Iron Paradise, but uh, going back to co-op horror posses, yeah, we need to do like some, smelly like I was saying Paradise, earlier, uh, like Dead Space course, 3, Zoa Energy, the number like, one fastest growing energy we need to like uh, game. do some co-op horror uh, games. A lot of nicknames. The Rock, La Roca in Spanish, uh, Uncle Handsome, oh. Sexiest Man Alive, uh, Big Drink And sometimes energy. I just need to like... Get you to always trick you to come over joke. here always room for the extra large and just have you play a horror game for me, and, and awesome. I'll say I played it. Uh, <laughs> you guys also know me as the greatest and most electrifying surprise in gaming that happened. You know me as the foundation. And I got to tell you guys, uh, number one, thank you so much for the crazy response of me becoming the foundation, but also the foundation. I got to say that, you know, I've had such a pleasure. Uh, working with <laughs> um, Epic Games and uh, the teams over there, and we cannot wait to show you what we have in store for the future. 
And speaking of the future, in the future, I'm sorry, you will Mr. Rock, sir. I wasn't paying attention to Adam. you. I don't know what you're talking about. Black Adam, as millions of you know around the world who know the Black Adam mythology, he is ruthless. He is unstoppable. And for those who don't, I always like to say a quick tutorial is this: um, Black Adam has the powers of Superman, but the only difference. Well, there's a few differences, but one of the biggest differences is Superman's weakness is magic, and Black Adam's, one of his superpowers, is magic. So you do the math. Uh, October 21st, I cannot That was a wait very brief... <laughs> Black Adam around the world <laughs> in theaters only. Brief description. And you guys will finally see <laughs> yeah. the hierarchy of power in the DC Universe change. Uh, it has been an honor to become Black Adam, and it was a... It is a role that's in my DNA and that I was born to play. I was born to play the man in black, and I'm honored to show it to you guys on October 21st. So until then, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, stay focused, keep having fun, keep kicking ass, uh, enjoy your gaming, and I'll see you down the road. This is Black Adam. Black Adam. What have your powers ever given to you? Oh, so we're just going right into it, okay. Yeah, you were right. They were just showing off slave until I died. Uh, Black Adam, but instead of a game, it's literally just the movie. Reborn a god. At this summer game fest. Now, I kneel before no one. You can be the destroyer of this world. Or you can be its savior. Yeah, he is perfect for the role. Like, it's I'm not gonna lie. Up to you. Behind you! Did he just catch a rocket? He caught a rocket. Yeah, but if they do a Black Adam game before a Superman game, one that's not shit, there's gonna be a riot, especially from Angry Joe. <laughs> Advertising market. Oh, I didn't see it. Maybe I'm so used to ignoring them, my eyes just glazed over them. New level. Oh. It's so sad. I feel so bad for like hardcore Superman fans and shit, like Angry Joe and stuff. Like, I'm not a hardcore fan, but I do love my superhero and villains and shit, and it, it just feels disrespectful when it's, when in this day and age, you're more likely to see Superman in Fortnite fighting and killing with a gun than you are before to get an actual fucking amazing game about him, and it's just... Uh, Nintendo, you sneaked in in here? Don't you have your own thing? What? Just sliding on in there. Yeah, I think I think the only way to have like a good Superman game is literally to take him off of uh, Earth or like I don't know, have it like a different dimensional Earth or maybe uh, a planet where he still has his powers and shit, or maybe even like have him traveling 
a couple different worlds like for the storyline where like there's maybe like one part where he loses his powers but he's still like a lot of people forget superman he's not human so when he loses his power he doesn't turn into a human he's still a fucking alien so it's like depending on what universe uh universal superman they base it on like he's still gonna have like uh enhanced senses and shit because he's not fucking human <laughs> that was so fun to see courage and ray in that fall guys piece and you can play and download fall guys for free starting june 21st across all platforms including nintendo switch xbox pc and playstation all right back to another new game announcement we're going to announce a brand new game and universe from a new team of legendary developers check this out <laughs> Fresh Giant Studios. Oh, God. That little cold air and just looking at the snow and shit. Oh. Oh. That feels so good right now. Signals breaking up. Command, I'll do one last scan. See you soon. Over. What's this? Okay, hurry. Is this new IP or something else that I'm not recognizing? Command, I may be on to something. Yeah, it's either like kryptonite magic and a red sun are like the only ways to depower uh a kryptonian that i know of anyway if there's any other way i can't remember like because like i have it command repeat I like he could either be like poisoned uh cursed or ends up on a planet with a red sun and has to like fight his way off of it or something but because he doesn't have his powers it's a lot harder seriously they should be paying us because we come up with like shit on the fly that they could do if they put the time and money into it Instead, Superman still has the legacy of that fucking N64 game. Jesus Christ, that was a fucking... Am I supposed to recognize this? I'm so bad at recognizing shit. I still can't tell if this is new IP or something else. Stormgate. Register for 2023 Mita. I'm guessing that's a new IP? There you have it, Tim. Congratulations. Stormgate is real. We have a name and some details. Uh, so, first of all, congratulations yeah, see, on this announcement. Like, We're so excited about the return of he RTS. Didn't, brand new, uh, again, franchise. depending on what, what uh, timeline right, or so universe Superman you base, is, base it off of, solar it's like that unleash the infernal host maybe there something happened, Earth. like like I said, either magically uh, or otherwise, some hints of some I mean, you know, something you else could have happened where it's like he has races, to relearn uh, you know, all his powers or get them the back. Yeah. yeah, we're unveiling <sighs> our first two factions today, but there will be more. Literally, uh, so the, the comics and shit and are uh, endless. There's endless the ideas to, the, to pick from. Intro cinematic. Uh, and then also the infernal hosts who are these demon-like monsters who come from another world. I think 
one thing everyone wants to know about, especially your background pedigree of the team, of, you know, where do you want to push the RTS genre? It's something we've all loved for decades, but, you know, opportunity for a lot RTS. of innovation. Mm -hmm. um, I know you're going to show us, I think, some, some hints of where you're going to go Im image-wise with the actual gameplay made in Unreal Engine, but any sense of what you want to do for the gameplay in this game? Absolutely. I, but the first thing I want to say is we are very consciously trying to stay true to what players already love about RTS. Um, where we're really trying to push what does the RTS genre stand and for? be innovative. Like, I have a feeling first I off, should know this. Um, for one thing, we're free to play. Uh, but so no, slow today. No win, no NFTs, nothing like that. Um, just, just to stay, yes. lower that barrier to entry to get players in. But we're also really trying to be a lot more social. Um, so you'll be able to play the campaign cooperatively. We've got three player open ended co op. Um, and we've even got three versus three for competitive multiplayer. But of course, we've also still got 1v1 competitive. And as Real a little time surprise, something. I think we've got some first kind of work in progress images. Sounds uh, about right. Game, mm. right? <laughs> yeah, these are still very much still uh, being worked on, but some shots of uh, actual assets that we're building in Unreal Engine 5. Wow. Well, I, I, I love Maybe it. Maybe real time strategy. You said for the beta, so people can sign up real, now. Get real time ready. shooter, and I'm just real time so strategy. I'm so thrilled that there is like a, that. a brand new RTS franchise coming from you guys and your background and what you did, you know, at Blizzard. Okay, so it's brand new. So it is a new IP. Okay. Giant. Uh, thank you so much for giving us your announcement. Unless I'm today confused again. Thank you I'm just so going to assume it's a new IP. <laughs> awesome. All right. Frost Giant <laughs> Stormgate. Keep an eye out for it. Now it's time for another indie game announcement that I'm excited to share with you. High Water. It's pretty, this one out. It's pretty cool that they're doing indie games. Good morning, That's High always Water cool. Dwellers, High Water Pirate Radio, keeping you in the know. Because indie games Elfville. usually don't get like a, a bunch of hype. Authorities continue to deny false rumors that Alphaville elites unless are planning to evacuate to Mars. Unless they True somehow not, like get the popular online. Is that the world ended by accident. Sunday. What a breathtaking trailer. High Water is an adventure strategy game set in a world ravaged by extreme climate change. Now, speaking of the world around mm. us, the conflict in Ukraine that's a is cool, not far That's a cool looking mind. game, but I doubt I'd play it. Games, I mean, I'd probably watch someone else play it, Studios, but... A Belarusian studio with devs from Belarus and Ukraine. The team <sighs> had long hoped to reveal a new trailer here today, but were understandably unable to complete it in time. Guys, I just want to say we're thinking oh, of you that's and kinda, all the developers impacted that's by the sad. conflict and hope to be able to share your work that in sucks. the show. All right, our next game is an official selection of the Tribeca Games Festival. It's American Arcade. Yeah, that is a game you would, you would switch to after a uh, Plague of Horror game. Yeah. <laughs> constantly voting you up or down. When you become unpopular, you need to start running for your life. Check this out. <laughs> uh, oh, Picture Jesus. a city where technology and science go hand in hand with fun and entertainment. My grandfather, Elijah Walton, had a dream to build the city of tomorrow. That dream is now a reality. And that city is Arcadia. A 43 square mile metropolis where each and every citizen enjoys a life of luxury and comfort. Broadcast live 24 hours a day, seven days a week on every digital platform. American Arcadia. Control, 
Subject on the run on camera 4025. Oh, Interrupt shit. Broadcast immediately. No. Listen <laughs> to me. We can't allow Trevor Hills to escape under any circumstances. Trevor. Trevor, can you hear me? Be careful and don't make a sound. Don't worry. I'm going to get you out of there. Okay. <laughs> well then. Apparently we've made it to the beach. Next up is a sequel we've all been anticipating for a long time. There's trouble in paradise and watch out. You don't want to get bitten. After many years of rumors, did they turn the floor into sand? This much anticipated like, sequel. Is it is the fucking floor a screen, or did they like what the fuck? <laughs> oh god damn it, Epic Games! Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. Are the fucking goats back? This seems like a wholesome good time. <laughs> oh shit. Yep, yeah, Go Simulator 3? Oh my god. <laughs> There you have it. That was Goat Simulator 3, and it's coming later I've this year. I've only ever played the, the first one. Store. Now, last year, Marvel and 2K announced Marvel's Midnight Suns, a tactical RPG from Firaxis Games, the studio behind XCOM and Civilizations. Heroes from the Avengers yeah, and we do gotta play it. That, that's like something. Supernatural ones like Blade and Ghost Rider for a <laughs> that's, that's something Lilla, you do want when you just want to do demons. like a whatever Today, the fuck. We've got to look at some new folks set to join the battle. Okay, is this like an actual game or is it just a not actual gameplay? Great. Lovely. Is this like an actual game or like a... <laughs> like a game where they're just trying to cash in and half-ass it? Kind of like those those games that were always based off of the movies. Quit whispering to me. I didn't ask for ASMR. some backup.
the fuck? <sighs> yeah, I'm good. Counting on you again, old friend. Three, two, one. That used to always work. Well, it did that one time. <laughs> I'm triggered. <laughs> that was Midnight Suns, and now we're moving on to the wonderful world of Cuphead, the delicious last. Course. I don't. I honestly don't want to know what uh, Twitch or YouTube will even last course, DLC, strike for anymore. Like joining me now is uh, Maya Maldenhauer from Studio MDHR. So first of all, Maya, it's it seems really to be coming. willy nilly, it's and really sometimes it doesn't even make any sense. We are thrilled. Well, I'm so thrilled, too, that uh, I think all the fans can't believe that this is here. And I've been lucky enough to oh, play I don't this care about on my Cuphead. Steam Deck uh, last week. Like, I am so this, uninterested in this, like... People are not going to be ready for how <laughs> this amazing this looks. I, just, the backgrounds and what you guys have I feel like you've, you've like, I know up, a lot of people love it and shit, but, as we would expect, uh, but... I just don't care. Look, you guys <laughs> it even to the next level, which I didn't think was possible. Yeah, we absolutely did. <sighs> I think we point one thing that we're proud of in this, because we really honed our craft took everything to the next level from animation, the backgrounds, the music, gameplay design, um, and of course, our new playable character, Miss Chalice. I'm very proud of her. Chalice is fun to play as, and, and even though this is a DLC, it feels like it's its own game inside of Cuphead in many ways. It is, it is, definitely. Yeah, you just get <laughs> okay. on the island, and, and there you are off to this new uh, new territory, which is amazing. Yeah, it's our biggest island yet, super-sized bosses, lots of secrets to discover. Um, don't let any rock go unturned. Yes, and lots of challenge ahead. Well, I know you brought. I, I know you want. You don't want people to necessarily have too much. I'm still not over the fact that their floor can basically yeah, is uh, basically a big ass screen. Unless unless they're doing it some other way um, that I, I don't know. Favorite, um, attacks and transformations. We hope everyone enjoys it. All right, let's check it out. Cuphead, the delicious last course. Thanks, Mile. I'm sorry, I don't care. Like, I get there's a large fan base and shit, but this is so not up my alley, it's not even funny. Fascinating. Now, if you want even more Cuphead, and who doesn't, tomorrow we will show you an exclusive look at season two of the Cuphead show. When I How long is the Netflix's Summer Game Fest Geek supposed Week, to be? Which will include new show and game announcements. Oh, yeah, Netflix is doing that shit. That's <laughs> so weird. <laughs> and that's not all. There's more Summer Game Fest all weekend long. Coming up next is the Day of the Devs Indie Showcase with I Am 8-Bit and Double Fine, then Devolver's Yeah, that's what I figured that they would probably be ending soon. Tomorrow after Geek Week, there is the Epic Games Store Showcase us, at 11 a.m. Pacific, guessing, 2 p.m. Eastern, maybe. with news on know. Rocket League, and the Tribeca Game Showcase. And Sunday, don't miss the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, with a look at the future of Xbox and Game Pass. Now we have some exciting news for Nintendo Switch and PC fans okay, so they're still about going. Okay. Neon White, a game where you play an assassin from hell who slays demons for the chance to ascend to heaven. We're called Neons. Sinners plucked from hell to do God's dirty work. But I'm finding it hard to believe we're in heaven. Let's see. Seems like the Devolver Digital, Devolver Digital thing is gonna be the next thing showing today. 
Uh, don't look like I think that's not until six. Uh, We've shown you lots of games today made by huge teams. Now it's time for a game made by a single father in Poland. Over the past year, he's brought on some help to bring his vision for a fast-paced action game, Midnight Fight Express, to life. Let's take a look. You know the saying, get knocked down, get up again, that whole spiel. It's time, partner. Time to rise up. Together. It's happening. The big guy's actually going through with it. While I sat at his side, seeing lives as dollar signs, I had the stink of corruption all over me. And you know who put it there? Nah, not him. Me. Well, I ain't wearing it anymore, and neither are you. Tonight, we wash this whole damn city down. Was it made by one dude? Damn. Such a cool game, and I'm happy to announce that a PC demo of this game is going live right now on Steam and will be part of the Steam Next Fest next week. I really want more playable games to get in the hands of you guys uh, at home. More frame. Check it out. All right. Joining me now and I looked is it up Megan and from Digital Extremes to talk all things This is supposed Warframe. to be maybe around Megan, an hour and a half to two hours, so and My we're an hour Canadian? in, so... I know, we got a lot... I just happen to always have these Canadian teams on the show. I don't we know how that works out, right? Okay. We do, well, oh. we have a great connection. We've also done a lot with is Warframe that the skin over the years, and I know right now anyone that you can watching get on with the Twitch drop. for more than 30 minutes, this show is going to get a special Twitch drop, right? That's right. I already have seen people getting it. Free Protea. right there, loud and proud. Protea. 30 minutes for watching. Thank you for letting us kind of take over Protea. your oh. special events category, but she is there and she is for you if you are properly linked up. No, Warframe. You yeah, know, I want to play it, but I never know years. what the you hell I'm doing. So I need to play with you. You have you know me? coming up in July, which is so I can literally just follow you around like a lost puppy. What's next. What, what can you tell us? Well, I can't tell too much, yeah. Um, but yeah, July 16th, 2022, it's a digital event again this year. Like, I think uh, I've today, started actually, we just launched playing on PC, so you can get some Xbox, goodies, and PlayStation. Cool like, I think I have accounts all on really all three. Live today. But of course, the reason you I'm teach here me is to the you know, kind of debut. We have our Tenno Live the during Tenno Con, which is our ways. big reveal of the night. And we usually do a little bit of a, a gameplay, a little bit of a demo. And I think a lot of people can suspect what it might yeah, be. Yeah, did you get the I'm drop, by the way? Confirm what it is that Tenno Live is going to show. And what is that? Can I say it? Yes, I think you can. Okay, you're going to get your first look at the <sighs> Dabiri Paradox. I mean, I'm good with either Finally, one. I think I have I it know, downloaded on uh, PS5 uh, right Dabiri now. Paradox is going to be what Tenno Live is all about, and I'm so happy. Uh, the team worked really hard I'm on good the with either one. <laughs> for it, and I'm just really proud and excited to show it. You got the drop? Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here on Summer Game Fest. Let's take a look Better at get that, that shit. right now. Better get that shit. My child, my friend. What was done is done. New dangers. Of the drama. New choices await us now. Bring back Space Mom. <laughs> For now, you're not my real dream space mom. Of who we were. And I of want who my we real space become. mom back. <laughs> the Dula paradox. Oh, there's a tin. Uh, 
I know how to say words. <laughs> July 16th, I said. Oh, we gotta watch the Tinocom. The Tinocom. We're gonna have a drop on that one too. Or... Next, it's time for a new look at Honkai Star Rail, an upcoming open world space RPG. Yeah, a lot of space today. That's going to be on Impact 16th. Hoyaverse across mobile and PC. This studio continues so to deliver. Thursday. And this new trailer reveals for the very first time a new and exotic realm players will be able to explore. I might try to stream it. Depends on if I got to babysit the new puppe. I was cutting it close today because uh, my folks were going to do their little cleaning business thing. And I had to babysit the puppe because the puppe cannot you handle being alone right at now. all. Like you at all. Who you are, why you're here. And they literally got here like 15 you know minutes before the show started. In the near future, you will encounter many perils. You will be Bad predatory mobile game family. people. Well, it's hard for me to get into these types of games because oh, I know this sounds bad but after a while they kind of just look the, all the same like it's hard for me to tell the difference anymore oh my god the drama Like the the protagonist is always some like little twink ass who all the ladies want for some reason, or some some girl that has way too much jiggle physics for her apparent age. <laughs> and that's not all from Hoyaverse. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Zenless. Yeah, they're, Zone they're just Zero, really clones. Oh uh, God, it's a futuristic it's just... urban action game. I have to say, I'm blown away by what I've seen so far. It was announced a couple weeks ago, and it has the detail. Like, I'm not dissing all of them because there's like some actual good ones out style. there. Here is the world premiere of a brand like, new Like, even look I know that. Zenless's notable characters, armed enemies, but it's and just world these days, it's games. it's just saturated with clone sh of shit. And the, and half the time, or like 90% of the time, it, it usually has like some mobile-esque monetary gain to it. Oh, the Chun Li. What is with the butt physics? I'm sorry, but her gluteus maximus is so fucking muscular, so fucking toned. Ain't nothing gonna jiggle. You wanna put butt cheek jiggle on the characters? You better get them on them dudes. Cause you know majority of them, all their tone and muscle, upper body. Their asses be jiggling. Not too late. Her lower half is so toned. Nothing should did jiggle. I'm just I'm sorry. All right. Oh, you didn't get a notification? Sorry, Phoenix. Like I know it I think it did it on Discord and I tweeted it, but there's nothing I can do for for Twitch notifications. <laughs> How you doing, Phoenix? One of my favorite reveals last year was TMNT Shredder. I'm getting back into streaming. All of the turtles are and I'm already having today. difficulties, well, but I don't the care. It's the end of development, and the team wanted to use SGF as a way to reveal one exciting aspect of the game they've been keeping under wraps until now. <laughs> the universe does not want you to be here at my my comeback stream <laughs> Ugh, how you doing phoenix how you doing I don't know, 
of this uh, the Summer Game Fest thing started off strong, but the more we get into it, the more bored I'm getting. The talking in between don't help. Yeah, I think it's supposed to... This The Summer Game Fest thing, it's like an hour and a half to two hours, I think. We're an hour and 15 in, I think. There's more Last of Astraba. Fucking hell. Why? Who cares? Just stop, people. Either play the games or don't. Either like the games or don't. For the next trophy. <laughs> that is the question, Phoenix. That is the question. What is this? I wasn't paying attention. We've been doing that all day. This whole stream. tennis shoes she wearing she got fire coming out of them oh my god slow-mo games behind? What do you mean? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, wait. There's more! Rewrite history like the white men of old. Have you ever wanted that superpower? Uh, I thought I thought that's what you're talking about, but I wasn't sure. How far will you push humankind? Humankind allows you to shape your civilization by combining a multitude of historical civilizations God, from the, the ancient to the modern era. One Piece is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, and Bandai Namco is bringing the mega popular franchise back to video games Odyssey. with One Piece Odyssey. Monkey D. Luffy and his crew of pirates are off on their next adventure. This trailer reveals the setting, a mysterious island where Luffy and his straw hat crew <laughs> become marooned in this exciting upcoming JRPG. The Straw Hat Pirates journeying along the Grand Line. Oh, <laughs> 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 these fucking fucking goofballs, I swear. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> your wife, Phoenix, I swear. Have you even counted how many waifus and husbandos you got now? Or is your collection just endless? You see that? She touched his booby. Unravel the adventure that awaits. In an odyssey beyond. Oh, is that <laughs> 700 plus? <laughs> One Piece Odyssey. His tits out. Is that is that what you love best about his personality? This August, Soul Hackers 2 from Atlas launches, and we've got your first listen to the English voice cast with this quick new look. Oh my god. Ringo. Ringo. <laughs> I thought she said rainbow at first. I'm like, hell yeah, gay. <laughs> Take my hand. You get one more chance to make things right. So that's our mission then, save the world. With so many new games featured across SGF events, you might be wondering how to plan for your summer gaming dreams. Nerd Wallet can help you find the smartest credit card to reward your gaming purchases. Seriously? Nerdwallet.com. The Epic Mega Sale is going on right now. Save up to 75% off top PC titles with an additional 25% off eligible products. And it wouldn't be the Mega Sale without the free games vault no one cares, featuring Epic. man eaters. Jesus. Be sure to claim your copy before the sale ends on June 16th. Tune into the Epic Games Store Twitch channel for our summer showcase on June 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. We're taking a look at new announcements and updates from PC titles heading to the store this year and beyond. Oh my god. We're trying to do it on TVs now. Stadia's got like <laughs> like three people still playing on it. There's still I don't I think Stadia is supposed to be dead, but I think they're still developing or um, supporting it for now. My guess is there's probably a contract or something. Either that or someone's very 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 delusional. In Mario Strikers Battle League. Yeah, you need that in super no uh, internet setup. Like, Chaos what is it called? So the to do whatever it takes to claim fuck, I can't so much remember fun, words. It hurts. Mario yeah. Strikers Battle League. Only on Nintendo Switch. Game rated everyone 10 and up. <laughs> Amazon Luna lives to the stage. <laughs> Hi. My name is Carl, and I'm a developer on Metal Hellsinger. You know how in some games where the music's really good, you feel compelled to move and shoot to the beat? No. Well, what if you had to? In Metal, the better you are at slaying to the beat, the more intense everything gets. 
and we have vocal performances from legendary artists like Serge Tankian from System of a Down. So while headbanging no isn't one, mandatory, no one can enjoy we do recommend it. Music and games anymore Steam, if they're Xbox streamers or YouTubers. So go check it out and slay to the beat. You either risk it and play with the music on, like I'm doing, or I'm just saying fuck it, or you go like ultra hardcore on yourself and like fucking mute that shit automatically. Yeah, this game does look fun though. Like, I believe this is one they showed off a little bit earlier. I love the songs, and I'm loving the gameplay we've seen so far and shit. I would definitely play this. I would definitely get it. But the question is, if you're a content creator, will you automatically get a strike? <laughs> will your shit get, like... <laughs> will you be attacked? <laughs> You'd play this at a church, Max Volume. Hell yes. <laughs> that one was Metal Hellsinger coming later this year. Just, Fun could you imagine like sneaking into a church like right overnight a demo and like <laughs> setting up like an old school LAN party <laughs> and just playing like shit like that at max Super volume? Games. This spiritual successor to Until Dawn stars David Arquette and an all star cast. All oh, that new one. Reviews, and this is one of those. Binge worthy the teen spiritual successor to until dawn your story and determines who lives and who dies at a camp in upstate new york here's the first look at the launch trailer family is the most important thing in the world i recognize him but if your whole family you know like every last one of them decided to jump down the bottom of a well and they're all just Hanging on the end of a rope. I can't remember what else he's been in, but I recognize that fucking face from goddamn Xena. Warrior Princess. He was that fucking doofus. Always got his shit kicked in. What? There is a lot more to this than you realize. Like what? Kidnapping, murder, cover ups. I think the whole Hackett family is in on it. You have no idea what's going on here. Not a goddamn clue. All right, let's do this. Who should I call? 911. Hercules. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but. Less muscular. We gotta get out. Half the time he couldn't even keep his fucking helmet on the right side of his head. This is fucking hilarious. It's a creature feature. It's oh, really the, in real life, the, her, the old school the Hercules actor, like, he went full clown mode. Them's the rules, you noob. You noob. Oh my god. Back at the Game Awards, we were proud to reveal Nightingale, a shared Oh yeah, this game, Nightingale. Game collection games up in Canada. Now I it's remember time to this give one. you a brand new look and deeper look at the game. Including its innovative realm card system that lets you impact things like the weather Wait. pattern, resources, and challenges. This in looked its interesting, but realms. here is your exclusive new look. Don't show me something I'm gonna hate, please, because this actually looked interesting when we last saw it. Pre-alpha footage. Oh shit! You're alone in the realms. I'm afraid the portals are a mess. Not even sure if Nightingale made it. Given how fragile you humans are, I'd say that staying fed, dry, and rested should be your priority. If the portal arch is inactive, you'll need to make realm cards from rare resources. Once you have realm cards, you can activate the portal. 
Beware them. Foul things lurk in the interrealmic void, waiting to get in. Be ready with your axe pick. Will this be single player or multiplayer? That's the question. Or both. Remember them showing it off a little bit? Like they kind of gave us a teaser. And it looked good, but I'm still not entirely sure if it's like. I mean, it looks single player, but I'm also, I've also been fooled before, so. With the reboot of Saints Row that we revealed last year at Gamescom, and today we're happy to announce the launch of the Boss Factory oh, demo no. across PC and Saints console, Row. which lets you design and set up your character. Oh, the controversy Row, over this fucking game series. Guys, you got to do something to capture people's attention. So, what do we build next? We are so good at this. I'm swaggiest. Oh my god. Hello, hello, fellow cool kids. Seriously, this, this is, is perfect. perfect. Dinner and a show, baby. So basically, this is like the opposite of what they first like teased with when when they announced they were doing another Saints Row game. Like they were reimagining it or whatever. Like, didn't they at first download now? Oh shit! Oh my god! Oh, no, I don't care. Um, <laughs> um, like they tried to make the Saints Row series more serious. Which is basically the opposite of what the Saints Row was made for. Next, we've got an exclusive so first I think they're doing like a hard right. Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, Fat Shark's follow-up to the critically acclaimed Vermintide series. Dark Tide promises intense four-player co-op action and terrifying enemy hordes to team up against. And it's our out on September 13th for PC, on Steam, and exclusively on console on Xbox. Warhammer Dark Tide. I've always wanted to play a Warhammer game. Just never got into it though. Manufacturer on HL7836 is heading towards a power system's failure thanks to a bit of heretic sabotage. Yeah, see, Saints Row was made to make fun of like the GTA series and like the GTA clones. Access the operations array and use the cryonic rods to flush the system. That's what Saints Row was. They, they've admitted to this. Like the first uh, Saints Row series was basically just to make fun of shit, and like GTA and other games. They literally built a game to not be taken seriously, and it worked. Interrogators. If all goes 
This looks pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, bully. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> like, it has so much shit in that game that you can do, and it's so, like, fucked up. <laughs> Oh my god, Yomi, did they really say that? <laughs> it's canon now, you can't take it back. No take backsies. Bloober team is known for psychological horror games like Blair Witch and the Medium. Today, they are ready to reveal their latest <gasps> creation made completely in Unreal Engine 5 for a visceral horror experience. Oh damn, they used it's Unreal. Return to oh. the world of Layers of Fears. Get a dose of this. Well, it's, ca it's canon now, they can't take it back. Someone once said insanity runs in our family. Let it run. Oh shit. Listen, <laughs> when you have a crazy family and you're like, you know what, I'm not gonna, tr I'm not gonna fight it. I'm gonna f go full extra crazy. <laughs> Layers of fears. Is this it like October, is it like Gotham a remake of, of like uh, Batman is dead. the other Something games, or is it family, like Batgirl, Nightwing, Red next Red in the Robin series or something? I didn't really give us an exclusive new look. Get whether Let's they said or not. To hear from executive producer Fleur you were Martin. right, Phoenix. <laughs> Like I, I looked at him like this. Some Hello, of this stuff I'm looks Warm familiar. <laughs> Games Montreal. I'm Fleur Marty. I'm the executive producer on Gotham Knights. Today we are thrilled to share more with you on one of our beloved knights, Nightwing. This showcase is the first in our character series, and we're really looking forward to share more with you as we continue working towards our launch on October 25th. So I hope you enjoy the show. And I got in stay trouble tuned. for using stolen art. Oh, damn. That's fucked up. Wasn't there controversy about this game as well? Nothing. And then this city became my home. Its people became my family. Gotham gave me everything. It deserves to feel safe. Like, I think I heard, I don't know if it's this game, it might not be, but I think I heard, like, people talking about, like, the game's combat didn't feel 
Right? How hard we try, there's always more to do. And now, I don't know. It's up to me. It's hard to keep up with all these. I got this, Bruce. The ultimate team of that was Daddy Gotham Issues. Knights, and now we welcome. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, look who it is. Neil Druckmann from Naughty Dog. Uh, I think it's supposed to be Dog. All Night Wings. Uh, I don't know. It's, us, I'm, it's, it's honestly a, uh, hard to keep up with the all these games coming and, out for uh, like superheroes and villains and shit. We were joking about last night, like, watch the assets as leak, and yes. lo and behold. That's what happened. Well, the good Especially news when they get like delayed and, and canceled and then reimagined and then first of all, it is a you know it's a big know. month actually for Last of Us fans because uh, Last of Us One and Two both launched in June and it's nearing its two year anniversary for Last of Us uh, Part Two, which is is hard to hard to believe. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, um, you know, nine years for Last of Us One, two years for Last of Us Part Two, and we still hear from fans. They're still sending us letters and art, and these characters in this journey and this world mean so much to them. Um, and it's it's just been kind of amazing. Like Last of Us Part Two, early this year, passed a pretty big milestone and sold over 10 million units. And that kind of support, that kind of success, um, we're so grateful to our fans. It has allowed us to grow as a studio, and now we can take on multiple projects, more than we've ever had at the same time. Multiple projects. Okay, very interesting. So, uh, what can Last of, Us, Last of Us fans expect in the future from you? Thank you for Listen, that. just uh, give me another so Uncharted game. We Fuck a off. While back is what started out as a I'm so tired of hearing about Last of Us drama. Just team's ambition. They really ah. want to do something beyond what we've ever done before at Naughty Dog. And we felt the way to do it justice is to make People it a standalone just title. Stop. And we've been working on it for the past two years. Ambition has grown. And we're not quite ready to fully unveil it, but we're ready to lift the current a little bit and just give you like an update of where we're at. Okay, well, uh, what can you tell us about this new standalone oh, multiplayer game? I just don't yeah, care so, anymore. Uh, we have a concept art that we want to show. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, what I can tell I still you, haven't played oh, Last of Us 2 because the, the drama is, and the... Okay. And um, it's as big as any of our single player games that we've done and in some ways bigger. Uh, just it's the controversies story, and all um, shit. It just ruined it for me and I just couldn't game. play it. Um, it's got a brand new cast of characters. It takes place at another place, uh, another part of the United States. It's like a city might be somewhat familiar, some people. I'm sure our fans have already figured it out. Jack and Dexter, um, though. Uh, and it's, it's, I still it's really need cool. to play those. And it's being headed by Vinith Uggerwald. I want another um, Uncharted. And, I want another uh, Uncharted Pantani, game where it, it stars the ladies. Because, like, they did that side on one, and I fucking year. love that next one. Year. So next like, year they're dynamic. Well okay, well, very exciting that uh, this has evolved. and I mean, Like, I love... I actually I enjoyed it. Naughty Dog storytelling fused with multiplayer live game. Uh, it's it's something special. I, we can't wait to show it either. Okay, well, um, like that's I would not, not say all. no to another one of those. I've been about on the internet every day. It feels like up in <laughs> Calgary, they're filming the Last of Us. But show I don't we'll ever get it because. That spin yeah, off, so, uh, for the past um, year, even though it did um, really well, you know, teamed up with Craig Mazin of Chernobyl and I loved it. And HBO to adapt the last Companies don't, don't, TV, don't feel uh, confident show. unless they have uh, uh, been and, uh, their straight white dude's protagonist. The stuff I'm getting back, like it's going to flop Dog, without him. Like, feel uh, emotional because not only is it so good, and uh, the quality is so high, it's so authentic to what I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't. And, I don't mind. Uh, I, like I, I like the, the Craig and Nathan uh, uh, Nathan there. Drake character. Uh, and they're actually their last day of filming. But I'm not gonna lie. And so, <laughs> like the females he tomorrow. met Craig throughout right the game now, series, uh, I so liked it's, it's more. Than you might think. And you actually maybe it's just me and being my gay self or what. Yes, but uh, I just I like their their attitudes and invited me to direct one of the episodes. Um, I the think tone of the characters the episode, and directly. how they like okay. could, first look. Let's take could bounce off each <laughs> other so <laughs> well. See, uh, this is a certain museum that yep. players might know from the game. Um, and I really have to talk about Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. Yomi, know, you're forever going to be cursed them and seeing them do all the other with that auto shit. Throwing themselves like forever. Goals, um, you, could liter you could literally you could literally somehow find a phone or some shit. On and off camera. 
that has no auto anything in it. It felt so similar to the chemistry those and it two would still do it when we made the game. Um, and it really feels like this is going to be something special. And I, I will say this will be the most authentic video game adaptation yet. Well, I mean, that first image that they put out, it just, I mean, it feels like the video game, everything that I've seen, both public and other stuff, makes it feel sort of super legitimate, as you said, and that's awesome to see uh, Joel and Ellie from, from the front side now for the first time. Um, so we'll see more of that at next year that's coming as well, right, Sirius? Uh, you'll hear about it very soon. That's okay. Yeah, well, either, right. they All should right. either well, do, well, like, the very, supporting very characters uh, for Uncharted, I hear you actually like they did with uh, the ladies. On that spinoff one they did, that are part of the continue that, okay. or wow. maybe um, their daughter, because they, in Uncharted 4, spoiler alert, they oh, have a fucking that? daughter, Surprise. and she's into Surprise this shit. Hello, I know. Like, oh, she's learned all the uh, things from them, because she's like a fucking Bella teenager when we see her. Uh, from the game, right? So, uh, when Craig and I started working on the show, almost one of our first Like, she could literally said, continue the legacy, and maybe, like... Um, and we're such fans like her of, like, family and her, and her, her like, helping us create the other uh, supporting characters um, like so could like help her along the, the way or some shit. It has to be more than just like kind of like a wink to the camera and like a cameo. Okay. These are real roles that we're keeping under wraps for now. Uh -huh. uh, but man, I was I'm bummed that I couldn't be there with you guys when you filmed your stuff. That, there's been so much it's stuff. It's so I feel like so good <laughs> on the internet. There's so much like talk about what's being filmed, and I think that's you guys have kept a complete secret that you so you were up there and you you filmed your roles by now, obviously. Uh, well, keeping yeah. secrets yeah. with this franchise is kind of old hat. Like we've except had for today. Yeah. Yeah. except for today, yeah. <laughs> except for the day. Uh, it was it was one of the hardest things for us to do is to let not let people know that because we're so proud of it and the work that we did. We worked hard. The the crew. I have to say. Um, when I walked out on set, um, to be met with literally every person that I met on that crew uh, is such a fan of this game, and they all knew what it was that they were working on and committed to working on this project because of their fan <laughs> and their love for the, for the game uh, was one of the greatest. It was like I was coming home to friends. Yeah, I, I, the attention to detail, the crew was amazing. Bella and Pedro are... Man. I, they're so perfect, and it it we we've been trying to sort of describe that feeling of sort of seeing them in person. Oh my god! I'm it's so it's like uh, it's like the characters coming to life, but it it it's so much more than that. I feel like I can't fully explain it, but I am so excited to be a part of it, and just I can't. It's wait so to see hard it. for me to get hyped for shit like this anymore. So good. It's it's. So I love the story. I love no, just being I, a part of. I'm so world. excited about the series and the fact that you guys are gonna be in it and undisclosed. Like the first so Last of Us game sort of will always have a special and, place and, in know, my heart because I did love the game. Like I the played game through it playing? New characters? twice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. And so I did sneaky. the All DLC right, well, like so once or twice. on Twitter by now. Like I had fun playing the the first one. earlier today. Lots of talk about. It's a fucking great game, but really, what's happening is the controversy over the second one. He just uh, and it ruined like it for me. Round up remake, is that right? That's right. Uh, we wanted to give people the definitive version of the, the first game that wasn't encumbered by any technology. Uh, wanted to find a way to get. Do they not have a trailer? Are they just talking? Uh, and we're able to do it on the PS5 and PC. And bitch, sort of talk about it. Let's look at it. All right, let's take a look. If you're not, oh, you better show us, something. Part one. You better show something. If they little legit just came over to talk. I would have been like, bitch, you, you could have gone on Twitter <laughs> for an update. I've been on quite the adventure, <laughs> little brother. I reckon it's got something to do with that girl. It's got everything to do with that little girl. You know, are they re releasing it again? Close the outside so is that everything you hope for can't be any worse out there can't it's it? naughty dog skyrim <laughs> i had somebody that i cared about and in this world that's good for one thing <laughs> killed i can take care of myself rebuild from the ground had? up no one press X for doubt. 
shut. Count. I got this. Hope you know how to use that thing. I've had some practice. Truly one of my favorite games of the past decade. Guys, wh what's your reaction? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we haven't uh, seen that yet. For the yeah, past decade. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, they're just re-releasing it. it. These, perform these performances you did they're, a decade They ago. are yeah. doing a Skyrim. Yeah, oh, fuck. Performances. Oh, yeah, actually, God. We, we came up with a process where we could take the original... Uh, now with paid mods, we, we stole from pro layers. Also, kind of like, like Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be like there's gonna be like like, 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 like so ten different versions you could pre-order. You and you redid the models and rebuilt everything. Everything was re uh, rebuilt from the ground up. Uh, same art director re-art directed the whole thing from the ground up. They're um, even showing it. The, the Last of Us remastered. Is, is that um, they're closer to the original performance. Compared uh, to, the uh, don't, yeah, they don't need the part one on there. Everybody knows it's fuck the fucking first we one. Could have before. Um, and that's just like Jesus. one of those things um, we could talk about, like this brand new AI, like all the combat is like is, is redone. Um, Scarum containment just, breach. Uh, the fidelity <laughs> of everything, 60 frames per second, all the stuff you're getting on the PS5. Again, we wanted to give, knowing because of the show. We know why they're doing it. They're all, all new players for PS5 and PC. Because of the fucking controversy the over the second one. Us. They need that moolah. I mean, this is the only way they're gonna the like game. get any more money I, out of the I Last of Us series right now. Again, just to refresh my memory before yeah. working yeah. on the show. Uh -huh. um, That's the only reason I they're doing a, it is to get it on next gen, get more playing, money, uh, milk more money out of it, straight into and to also like bring um, attention to the fucking show. Of part two coming out, so I mean, it looks like I'm definitely going to be up for another yeah, playthrough. Yeah, I can't. I mean, yeah. I can't wait. <coughs> oh, I can't. Uh, you guys are doing an amazing job. Can we get them? It's it's really when you play it, when you see it. In Sorry, the I was really moving my headset. Can we get the them end, off the, the fucking stage? Can we move event, on, please? Back in the last if you're not well, going to tell whole, me, like, Uncharted Ladies Edition Part Two is coming on, out. Like, get off the stage. Again, to give that definitive version. Just to give a quick shout out, uh, this project is headed up by uh, Matthew Gallant and Shauna Sky, okay. uh, and you'll hear a lot more about it and see a lot more about it over the coming weeks leading up to the release September 2nd on PS5. All right. And well, shortly thereafter on PC. We will look forward to that. You, Neil, you've talked a lot about <laughs> Yo, me. Other people. You're what fucking auto curse. It's so games. fucking hilarious. Still making games. Okay. Uh, I haven't given up my, my day job. Uh, it's a little early to talk about it. Maybe if someone plays it once a week, then we can talk about it now. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll save it. But you do have a new project. Get off the so fucking we stage. Project, uh, but we'll save it for another summer game fest. Okay. <laughs> I love okay, the first well, we'll Last see. of we'll Us game, right. but get off the Troy, fucking Troy, stage. Thank you so much for dropping by summer game fest, and I am so excited that the Last of Us is returning, as you said, in September. So thanks. Please guys. don't tell me thanks we're so. ending on this. All right, well, that is going to do it. Thanks to Naughty Dog no. and PlayStation for that very special uh, look at the you're last going, of us and the entire franchise. You're going to end it going, um, on a wet fart that. Right, Summer Game Fest like continues that? continues over the next few days. Coming up right now on this very stream is Day of the Dez with I Am 8-Bit. You're going to end it like that. You had such a strong beginning. And then the Devolver Digital Showcase. Tomorrow, we've got Netflix. And you're going to end week, it which I'll be in a pile of, oh, game my God. Streaming, along with the Epic Games Store Showcase. And then Start strong in on diarrhea. Like, the they Xbox full on, like, game it exploded out their ass. Summer game Fest. And they're like, oh, uh, I guess we can bring this on stage. When we are back live in Cologne, Germany for Gamescom like, they were promoting the fucking TV show the game awards will return in with, this, live with the remastered of the remastered of Part finally, 1. I'm excited to share that Summer game Fest will they called it Part 1. As a digital and in-person event to bring the gaming community together. Uh, Devolver part of Summer Game Fest. starts at remember, six, I think. There are more events and announcements to come. We'll see you soon. Devolver starts at six, I believe. I think. Keep tuning in for more wet farts. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday <laughs> what the fuck to is this? you. Happy birthday, Day of the Devs. Day of the Devs. What? You don't know what Day of the Devs is? 
Day of the Devs is the greatest and oh definitely the oldest independent games festival that exists. It was started over 10 years ago by Double Time Productions <coughs> and I to celebrate uh, the best independent games out there and bring them to you, the fans. We want to bring developers and players together to get together, play games, and have a great time. It used to be a physical event only in San Francisco, but now it has gone digital so the whole world can enjoy it. And we're really excited this year to be part of uh, Are you going Fest. to work, Yomi? I uh, thought you so already were back, at work. Relax. Time is an illusion. Right, good luck, Yomi. Thing. No, I'm supposed to put this on. That's right. Everybody, put on your party hats. Everybody. Everybody. That's right. That looks good. Now we're cooking. Put on your party hat and enjoy Day of the Devs. Oh my god. We got a new one today. This is from a good friend Michael Frey and Rafael Munoz. Previously, Michael made a game called Kids with Playables that we published at Double Fine Presents, and this is his new one. It's about the limited time we have on Earth told through the life of a fly. This is called Time Flies. How long is this gonna last? Everyone? I wonder if this is gonna is last until Devolver. You might know my work from a game called Plug and Play. I co-founded a company the fact that our game called really Playables, where we made a game called Kids. Uh, but today, we're going to talk about this guy in my upcoming project. That is a collaboration with Rafael Mino, uh, who is the principal programmer on the game. The project we're collaborating on is called Time Flies. They like to stretch shit out, so you never know. But yeah, I think Devolver Digital's uh, thing is at, yeah, it's at 6. It starts at 6. Time Flies is about our limited time in this world. In Switzerland, where I'm right now, we have a life expectancy of maybe 84 years. In the US, it's about 77 years. So you have a little bit less time to achieve the things you want in your life. Oh my god. Like, I'm trying to find, like, the whole list of, like, shit that's gonna be streamed for, um, games and shit. Because <coughs> everybody seems to be doing their own thing now. But I can never find a complete flies, list. So like, I'll look at one and it'll look like it has list. everything, and then I'll look uh, at another and it has something else. Of that bucket list. Uh, so, these are the things you can do in the world. Are you subbed? You're not showing up as subbed for me. The game is coming to PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, PC, and Mac uh, sometime next year. Uh, please visit timeflies.bus where you can sign up for the newsletter uh, so you get updated when it's out, uh, or you find a link to the Steam page where you can wishlist the game. Thank you. You're only showing up as a moderator on my screen. I don't know if it's Twitch's fault or what. <laughs> like, you know the little things beside your name? It'll, it'll usually pop up if you're a sub or not. And clicking on your name Says previously subbed. Weird. Our 
next game is Planet of Lana, the debut title from Sweden-based Wishfully Studios and published by Thunderful Publishing. The gameplay is reminiscent of dark side-scrollers like Inside and Little Nightmares, but the vibes could not be more different. Who are these enigmatic enemies? What do they want with Lana's sister What the fuck world? did we just watch? I, I feel like I was in a fever dream with that fucking fly game. <laughs> I feel Hello. like I, ha I smoked something Pines, I shouldn't have. I'm the creative director at Wishfully. We're a small indie game studio in Sweden making Planet of Lama. So prime and used in our game, so, you play a young I girl called Lana, who is forced. I, I literally have no control over that. That, that I know of. Away by an invading robot army. It must be Twitch fucking up then. Early on in the game, Lana meets the mystical creature Mui. You quickly develop a strong cute. bond and friendship to Mui, and she proves to be both intelligent and loyal. Hello. Personality, Mui also has things that she's afraid of. Nano Mui. But being small and agile also has its <clears throat> advantages. For example, being able to reach places that you can't. I still, I can't, I still can't believe they ended on such a wet fart of an announcement. She can use to quote unquote announcement. I can't spaces. believe that wet fart. They had a strong beginning. Like I was fucking. I was fucking hyped as Together, shit for the games that were showing in the beginning. The harsh and beautiful environments of Novo. Oh, look Past at that. Robots. An ad. Through deep this fucking pop-up ads and on the bottom for Twitch are so fucking weird. Unraveling long forgotten but I mean, it's, I guess it's better than them fucking taking the whole screen. <clears throat> Lana is really a labor of love, and we're very excited here at Wishfully to bring you what we believe is a truly unique adventure. And beyond the companion based puzzle solving and hand painted art style, you will experience an engaging story with twists and turns that hopefully will stay with you long after the credits have rolled. Planet of Lana is coming to Xbox and PC this year, and you can wishlist right now at Steam or sign up at our newsletter at planetoflana.com. <sighs> this next title from Two Star Games is quite literally an on-the-rails shooter. You and your little yellow train with its mounted machine gun and exquisite collection of bobbleheads will face off against a demonic clown-faced train who is hell-bent on devouring human flesh. This is Choo Choo Charles. Hey, I'm Gavin, I'm the solo developer. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that to you, Phoenix. It shouldn't. Charles. Oh my god, I remember Yomi showed this to me like last year. There was like There was like a small little teaser thing for this, this and it looked I want island this in an old train. I need this in my life. This is so fucking stupid and horrible. I love it. Look at this. Uh, If you pump enough light, this just looks like cell, someone like went encourage him to run off and find something. Like this has cool. to be inspired, <laughs> like, like a fucking um, Fallout mod the or something. Above all else, and that's to and they said, Charles you know what? V1 and fight him to the this death. is goofy as hell. To do that, you'll need to explore the open but, uh, world, what if? <laughs> areas, <and include laughs> missions for the locals to gain powerful new weapons and scraps that you can use to upgrade your train's speed, armor, and damage. 
and need to leave the relative safety of your train and venture out on foot. This is where things get really dangerous, with Charles constantly roaming around looking for his next meal and camps of shotgun-wielding cultists looking for someone to feed to him. <laughs> yeah, you know that's, you know there's gonna be people out there that just dedicate like weeks to making memes of this shit. Now, uh, you know what's fucked up? They literally could have ended this the main Summer Game Fest show with After this, three heavily guarded and it would have been a hundred percent better than the, the wet fart to place the gems on one of the that they ended with, angering Charles and drawing him to your location. Best oh be God. careful out there because it might be unwise to wander too far from your train. If you do encounter Charles while you're roaming around, it doesn't matter what you do now because you have truly angered the beast and you'll either escape with your life or see it flash before your eyes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Nope. I would. Uh, nope. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna try this game, but I know. It sounds like something for you. I sure know I'm gonna die like every five Choo -choo seconds. Charles on Steam, I greatly appreciate it. It really does mean a lot. I think I've already wishlisted. We've got a special chat one for later, you. but it's very personal and near and dear to I Am A Bit because it's a I Am A Bit presents published title. That it's literally should have been, Academy yeah. And the, it, oh like my Hogwarts, God! Fuck off, Summer Game groups. Fest. The it's wet fart you left it on. Games, and you could have had that. Amusement supported space. an indie they game. Escape rooms in real life. Better they talk about One their I, game I'm than actually me. hyped for. Hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. And I'm Michelle, the art director. Wait, am Wait. I supposed to say I'm the... <laughs> hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. We're the founders. And I'm Michelle, the art director. Oof, okay. This is... Uh, I hate that. <laughs> Alright, one, once, once more with feeling. <laughs> hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. And I'm Michelle. And we're Coin Crew Games. Ugh, awkward. When Coin Crew Games was founded, More uh, we were actually sims. building real-world escape I rooms mean... and arcade machines, but when the pandemic hit, we needed to pivot. So we decided to take those learnings, building real-world escape rooms, and transpose them into a digital format, and thus Escape Academy was born. Good luck trying to hack me without sufficient power. The probability of your expulsion? High. Escape Academy is an escape room adventure game that you can play either single player or co-op. Oh, you that's play cool. as a student at this titular, mysterious escape academy where that looks you like get something to we could play together. Like, puzzle solving and train to become get out the, the ultimate Get out of the fucking room, room together. <laughs> escape. Room is no place to relax. We're all fans of escape rooms, so when we couldn't find a digital, authentic escape room Boyfriend experience, we decided to make one ourselves. <laughs> at the Academy. Escape Academy isn't just a puzzle game, it's an escape room game, and it brings that play pattern home. We have a huge amount of puzzles in this game, and they never repeat. And in addition to that, you can solve every puzzle using just your mind, no dexterity required, although you may want to bring a paper and pencil. Academic theming gave us the leverage to create a wide variety of rooms. Too dumb to play escape rooms. I mean, all of us, all of us combined. Would never find themselves like you know, it's gonna take us like at least ten hours to get out of the first room.
when <laughs> we were designing the game, it was really helpful to have uh, the experience of oh, both God. playing a lot of escape rooms and designing real world escape rooms as sort of a design anchor to buoy us to. I did not anticipate the rodent assisting you. That turmeric. It's all in with brute force. <laughs> Just take a sledgehammer to everything. We really took our time to create an eclectic out. cast of students and faculty members that help guide you throughout the academic journey of Escape Academy. Building on the lessons that you get in each room and raising the stakes throughout your journey at the Academy was definitely a design pillar we wanted to make sure it came through in the final game. so well. Analysis. I have succumbed to disco fever. Escape <laughs> Academy is coming to Xbox. I wonder how many you could play PC on July 14th. like at the same time. Will be available day one on Xbox Game Pass. And you can wishlist us today on Steam. <sighs> we'll like is it the Academy. Thanks. Like is it just like co-op literally like just two or is it like this up to four, for maybe, or something? Fans of organization out there, all those organizers. It's from a studio called Max Inferno, and it's a game about all the room games. Up just right. Oh fuck! Okay, it's bro. called a little. Oh god, it's stuck. Uh, uh, ow, that hurt. Yeah, I know the room games. I haven't played them, but I like watched bits and pieces of other people play them. They look pretty interesting. They're like really popular in that genre, I believe. Hi, I'm Annie. Hi. Look at all these Lucas. nerds. Look at all these nerds. <laughs> yep, we're really this, excited so to share awkward. with you today a cozy puzzle game that we've been working on called A Little to the Left. Is this going to be like someone's OCD nightmare slash dream come true? A little to the left is a game where you sort, stack, and tidy up the house. In each level, puzzles are hidden among regular household objects, and you solve them by arranging items in a very particular way. Many of the levels have multiple solutions. It's all about observation and imagining the different structures that could be at play. The game takes inspiration from our own home and some of our own little tendencies. Another big source of inspiration for the game is our cat, Rookie. We should be around here somewhere. Look at that cutie patootie. Oh, and a little furball. Yeah. Occasionally, <laughs> 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 this cat will show up on the periphery of your gameplay and undo your tidy work just to shake things up a little bit. So, just cat things. The game starts off pretty simple, but as you progress, the logic demons are putting three stickers on fruit. <laughs> someone real, someone that really hates their fucking job. <laughs> They're like I'm having a bad day. I'm putting twenty stickers on this fruit that you can't even tell what it is. <laughs> there is a lot to tidy up in a little to the left. Actually, every day brings something new. With the daily tidy delivery. You get even more out of our favorite puzzles. And you earn fun badges too. Well, thanks for stopping by. We hope you enjoy a little to the left when it releases later this year. See you later. Bye. They're so awkward. All, all these nerds, these game nerds. It's so awkward. Fucking cat. Don't let it near a switch. Are you fucking crazy? 
No. I've been excited that gave about me this real one life anxiety. Ages ago. <laughs> it's from developer Gummy Cat. It's called Bear and You would play that? And the, the title says it all. You're a bear. You run <laughs> bed and breakfast in the woods. And it's really freaking fun. We're debuting a brand new animated trailer, a bunch of gameplay you've never seen, and finally announcing a release date. Your cat three years down the stairs. What the fuck? I'm always paranoid if one of the cats get into my room. Cause sometimes they want to be in here because it's the hottest fucking room in the house. I fucking hate it. But I'm always paranoid. Like if I don't see them at all times, I'm like, no. No, you're wanting to play, you're wanting to roughhouse. Get up. get the fuck out. <laughs> I, I can't trust you around all these I'm electronics. <laughs> and I'm Radish. We're from Gummy Cat in Romania. Today, we're showing you our first game called Bear and Breakfast. It's a laid-back management adventure game where you build and run a B&B in the woods, but you're a bear. In Bear and Breakfast, you play as Hank a young, curious bear from Silver Valley who lives in a small home with his mom and two best friends. We grew up on management sims. Games like Theme oh. Hospital were <laughs> big inspirations for us, but we also wanted to make a game that tells a story alongside the usual management Sounds style. about right. It's like, oh, you really love this expensive gaming console? So it turns out that Let me just take a for some wet, reason, nasty diarrhea dump on it. There's old rundown buildings all over the place, and you're just the bear for the job. Can you romance other characters? Phoenix over here asking the serious, dedicated, journalistic questions here. The game follows a linear this story very that you advance by solving quests. A lot of them involve finding materials, building rooms, crafting furniture, and decorating stuff. Little the chew on wires, Jesus Christ. Awards different kinds of points. For instance, beds give comfort, showers give hygiene, that type of thing. You have to make sure that your room scores are high enough to satisfy whatever your guests are asking for. Each type of score comes with its own challenges. For example, later on you'll need to cook food for your guests through a minigame. There's a lot more to bear in breakfast, but you can play at your own pace since the game won't rush you. Oh, and there's definitely no creepy subplot hidden somewhere in the forest. Subtle. <laughs> yeah, it's not creepy at all. We're very all games should have dating sim elements. This year. I and mean, true. We can't wait true. to you all to Hank and his friends when bear in breakfast launches later this summer. Thank you. They should have the gayest dating sim elements in every fucking game. Every single fucking game. this next one uh it's full of secrets and puzzles and mysteries this dude is so white and so red own. in the face right it's now how long did they make him stand on that beach it's a pixel art Metroid that is the question Mania full of interesting creatures it's called animal well Hi, I'm nothing Billy else Dawson. you can add more Today character building sure <laughs> i've been working on called animal well
In Animal Well, you explore a surreal and sometimes dangerous pixel art labyrinth that is filled with secrets. This looks cute. I like the art style. It looks cute. As you explore, you'll encounter uh, various creatures, but it's not always clear if they're friendly or not, so it's best to proceed with some amount of caution. Uh oh. Throughout the game, you're going to find various items that will choke Lassie to the main <laughs> That's creepy as fuck. Like, that's legitimately yeah, creepy. The game has multiple uses, but you're gonna have to experiment if you want to figure out what they all are. Animal Well is a pixel art game. Uh, that's not just a pander to nostalgia, it's that I'm viewing as a technical opportunity. A 4K TV screen has 144 times as many pixels, but that means I have 144 times as much processing power to apply to each pixel. Throughout the game, you'll see a lot of things like fluid sims or dynamic lighting effects that haven't really been used in a pixel art game before. I love the sounds in the game. I'm designing Animal Wall is a layered experience. So what that means is the base layer is something the average person can play through and enjoy. Like it's got a good like uh, soundtrack. But then there's a second layer, which for most games you would consider this part like 100%ing the game. There are lots of hidden items uh, in nooks and crannies throughout the world. They're not obvious and they you might need some help to find these. The third layer has puzzles that don't really present themselves as puzzles. They might go unnoticed for years, potentially, or they might require some community collaboration to solve. Also, there's a, there's a puzzle in this video that may require some community collaboration to understand. But the first time people <laughs> can figure it out, uh, we'll get a free copy of the game at launch. And then while you're doing that, you can maybe wishlist it. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. These devs are so awkward. <laughs> like, I can literally feel their, their social anxiety through the screen. I mean, same. These poor indie devs that can't afford, like, PR people. With. Next up is Nyad, a colorful exploration game where you play as a water nymph, traversing a zen and peaceful world. This game comes to us from High Warp, a solo developer from Spain. Hi, I'm really happy to be part of the 10th anniversary of Day of the Devs at this exciting Summer Fest edition. I'm Elwin from High Warp, a solo dev in the studio from Spain, working on bringing to life very unique and personal games. I would like to say with you a preview of Nyad, a relaxing and colorful exploration adventure about flowing by a river. I put all my love creating every part of this game, so please enjoy. <laughs> Another cutie patootie game. The journey starts with the birth of a little water nymph at the spring of the river. Naya will grow up and all of a sudden of we're in a from uh, floating we, we, we transfer to the ASMR version. What the fuck? Like a duck, <laughs> deep like a fish, does like a frog, finding other adorable friends like butterflies, rabbits, snakes, turtles, cockroaches, and much more. Help them to find their way, avoiding obstacles and dangers. 
using your skills. You will immerse through a lot of beautiful places like a deep forest, a dark cave, a youthful creek, and more. Water symbolizing life starts pure and fresh, and little by little it will be fading into dark. You can sing to regenerate the nature, making sprout flowers in the path. And you must do your best, because the humans hmm, are controlling this river goal. Humans create their own fake rivers, like these noisy roads with strange smoke creatures. You are the guardian of this river, and that seems to be a difficult rivers. task, but don't be afraid, because a tiny cloud will <clears> take <throat> care of you from the sky. It, like, is it just me, or does like, he is he talking like he's in an ASMR or YouTube video or something? Under the sunrise, change its color, even tie small flowers on it. Creating Nayat, I focus it on a wholesome experience. Enjoy it at your own pace, exploring and flowing. Nayat will be available for PC and consoles by the end of this year. Thank you for watching. Okay, so it wasn't just me. Okay. Like, it just, it seemed a little bit, like, a little bit skewed to the, <laughs> the ASMR. Not quite breathy enough. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> If you ever find yourself longing for the good old days, then why not take a trip back to the Stone Age in this cooperative life and farming simulation game from Soda Den and Cryptico. Hunt and gather to care for your settlement, explore the ancient world around you, and best of all, become a friend to the mammoths. This is Roots of Pacha. Hi, I'm Timo, co-founder of Soda Den along with my brother. Hi, I'm Karen, the narrative designer. We're based in San Diego with the rest of the team in Argentina. Hola a todos, I am Dancer, the main artist. And I'm Johnny, Timo's brother. We are the team developing Roots of Pacha. A farming sim set in the Stone Age where you help your clan develop the ideas that shape humanity. In a time when there weren't stores to buy seeds or anything else, you build your village from the ground up. Instead of using money, you'll transform the world around you by contributing and working with your clan. Starting small, you'll explore the regions of this up? new land, <laughs> discovering plants and resources We need to, ro we need to know. Can we romance the cave people? We have important, hard-hitting questions. Like farming, domesticating animals, and the creation of tools that are now common. Ideas will build on one another, and after a while, you'll find your community transformed. I mean, this looks cute. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd end up playing it and burning down all Eventually, the villages and shit, but you know. To world. To try and explain who you are and why you're here. Stone Age setting was inspired by the book *The Clan of the Cave Bear*. Yeah, I wouldn't know anything about Star, the Stardew game. Like, besides what we played together, times, I haven't played it all. Is still complex. I'm, so, I'm so, I'm so bad. For example, finding something <laughs> to eat went from satisfying a basic need to making a dish and creating a reason to gather. Oh my God, potato, potato salad. salad. To make life easier, you'll find time to experience all the fun Pachas World has to offer. You'll get to know your clan, meet others living around you, and maybe even find that special someone. Our love of farming sims started with the first Harvest Moons, and Stardew Valley took it to the next level. With Roots of Pacha, we want to make our own unique contribution to the genre. 
We're working on this project with all of our hearts. We're super excited for you to play the final version. In the meantime, we have a brand new demo that just went live today. Thanks for having us. Muchas gracias. Play the demo now. Cool. And now I am very pleased to present a world premiere Chocolate from making our alchemy friends at Us2 Games, the, the folks who brought you Monument Valley, but is there Alba, romance and though? a bunch of other really, God really cool games. God damn it! Here it is. The world needs to know. But especially Phoenix. to games we really try and take what's meaningful and great about games and deliver that to everybody so with monument valley we make people care about a character for the first time if they've never really engaged with games very much and with albro wildlife adventure we took open world games and packaged that into a kind of theme about saving an island that more people are going to want to engage yeah i think with they're teasing you on purpose phoenix with this game what we really want to do is take these genres that we really love like roguelike games and turn-based tactics add a little bit of sports game in there as well and themes about dreams and conflicting fears and really package that together into something that feels really unique in the game, you play the role of Dester, he's a young person in their early 20s, who's coming home for the first time, having not left home in the, the very best way, their relationship with their mother and their family and their friends. There's a few of them that were a little bit broken, and they were broken because they didn't really have the words to say, and their father, who used to be a big part of their life, unfortunately passes away, and they don't have those tools and that person to lean on to, to bridge that gap. <laughs> So they managed to go Asking home, they the hard they used to play with their dad. journalistic and questions they here. With it, they find themselves in a world between worlds, neither asleep nor awake. And when they're in this, they can explore these moments, these memories, and solve these creative problems through a, through a ball game. And when they do that, they find the right words to say to confront these people. The people we're going to be meeting in Desta's dreams are people who were significant to Desta before oh my God. they left town. They're really sticking to calling it this. And there are lots of people. Uh, I'm on Twitter well right now. <laughs> and some and I'm just casually browsing through. Of them in their dreams. And like Naughty Dog but posted, The Last of Us Part on 1 is coming to PS5 These characters and PC. Are really interesting because all of them are interwoven as part of Desta's story, Fuck but off. also with each other. They don't just appear as abstractions, but they really feel like a part of the makeup of Desta's background. <laughs> Phoenix. One way or another, the <laughs> that Desta meets throughout the game helped Desta become who they are today. And they've taught Desta a number of different things, like standing up for themselves, taking risks, expressing themselves, and more. There are a few different themes in the story, but I would say that certainly loss is a big part of it. Finding yourself, courage and perseverance, and reawakening. No pun intended. It feels like we've been able to put a lot of our, ourselves into Desta. Um, the same is true for pretty much all of our games, but Desta in particular is very personal to a lot of the members of the team. Um, I'm sure we can all relate to some of the themes of maybe having ghosted a friend and not being sure how you could like get back in touch with them or dwelling over how you might have said something in a conversation and like having that play over and over in your mind, which is like one of the core themes of the game. It's definitely got more depth and more game mechanics than anything we've made before, and it's being designed from the ground up to be a multi-platform title. We're really looking forward to telling you more about Dest of the Memories Between in the coming weeks and the coming months. This better be gay. <laughs> this next game is called Shim. Uh, it's a shadow platformer. You're a little blobby character platforming around inside shadows, and a game with a really cool minimalist graphic art style. I hope you like it. Hi, I'm Ewout and I'm the developer of Schim. And I'm Niels from Exonize and I help Ewout develop Schim. We're located in the north of the Netherlands in a town called Leeuwarden. We are a team of two plus the talented people at Moonseller, Rudy Audio. Schim is a game where you move around in shadows. You play as a schim, a shadow creature. As a whole, schim is made to be approachable for a variety of players. At its core, it's about jumping around in shadows and platforming towards the end of a level. Each shadow 
has her own skin. What's that skin? Extreme Fogger. <laughs> the player who plays around is a skin of a human. However, this skin is separated from that person, and it's up to you to find your way back. In the game, you will also help other skin characters who have also been separated from their shadow. You can help them by finding their object. Skim takes big inspiration from the feeling of playing as a child. Playing imaginary games with made up rules. Move around in shadows and jump to the next shadow. and follow us at schimgame.com. Hi everyone and thank you Dev the Dev for having us cute. here. I'm Anne, the manager of Asobu, a community hub for indie game yeah, creators in Tokyo. see me playing that like maybe casually. We have can oh. come to work and meet other people, do small gatherings. Mm. And we are helping Japanese devs by introducing them to platforms, console publishers, helping them on marketing, or as usually they don't speak English, helping them to apply to overseas events like this one. And we're also doing a lot of online contents and streams, uh, like our big Asobu Indie Showcase, which will be aired this summer in English and Japanese, or our monthly stream in the collection, and podcasts, and many other things you can check on YouTube and Twitch. But first, uh, let's check two really cool Japanese titles. Yeah, I've never really seen like a bunch of Japanese in indies like get showcased. Fox and Frog Travelers, the demon of Arashino Island. I'm is sorry, her accent makes me think she's saying el something else here. when she says Fox. You will bless Fox. Her girl will find herself <laughs> on Arashino Island and starts traveling with Frog. Tori Gates, Fusto Lantern and Neon gives light and color to the island. But something is lurking in the shadows, inching even closer. Fox and Frog Travelers is developed by Rias, an illustrator and concept artist that came up with the idea for it, based on one of his illustrations. Oh damn! That's fucking Fox creepy. Long journey through the night is planned for release in a few years. That is fucking creepy. It's a relatively new scene under yeah. Solo developer Yo Fuji, Goodbye World is a narrative game about two young indie game creators, the Shai Kani and the extrovert Kumade. Mixing influences from comics like Ghost World and games like The Beginner's Guide or Moses 3, Goodbye World is a tale about the passion and struggles that comes with game creation. Through 13 chapters of the story, rendered in beautiful pixel art in a resolution close to the Super NES and Game Boy Advance. <laughs> Goodbye.
Spy World is due out on Steam later this year. If you like those games, don't hesitate to wishlist and to follow the devs on Twitter. And if you are interested by uh, Japanese indie scene or indie games, uh, you can follow us on Twitter, on Discord, chat with us and watch our indie game showcase, which is uh, coming this summer. And thank you again for watching and yeah, the devs for having us. Dev. The process of moving to a new city All can be bit. daunting. Our next game, Birth, from solo developer Madison Carr, who hails from Chicago, explores the idea of quelling loneliness through this there puzzle adventure. Hi, my name is Madison, and I am making a game called Birth. Follow. Okay, now I'm following. Birth is a point-and-click puzzle game about living alone in a large city. In order to quell your loneliness, you decide to create a creature, a friend, a partner for yourself, by collecting spare bones and organs that you find while traversing the city. You will explore libraries and post offices and museums and cafes and apartments that don't belong to you. <laughs> On Twitter, there's people that are thinking the same thing we were about The Last of Us Remaster. Like, In each of these games buildings, are cool and accessibility to games is also cool. Get to know them but like, The Last of Us already had a remaster. Why not put those resources towards another potentially great franchise or bring back Jack and Dexter? Their laptops and phones. But seriously, their cabinets why? And their notebooks. <laughs> the Blackwell series. Within these personal belongings, there are puzzles. Mm. Some are physics based, some are pattern based, uh, some are abstract. There are no instructions and I've been having the urge to get back into point and click games like the old ones or the ones that have like that old style <sighs> alongside the main game there are optional hidden tokens that you can find to unlock secret buildings and treasures Birth comes out this August. I made this game with my whole heart, and I hope that you like it. Aww. I mean, it looks good, yeah. have the Blackwell series. Like, I have a bunch of, like, point-and-click games I've, I've not played yet. Because, like, I got so much games on Steam and shit from, like, sales. Who's recently died and is embarking on the journey of accepting their own death. You solve mysteries with a the ghost? The mechanics Ooh. underscore the message that there's always a way through grief. You may get stuck, but you can always stop, reevaluate, and keep moving. It's all just part of the puzzle. Hi, I'm Florian co-author of the upcoming narrative puzzle game, How to Say Goodbye. Mm, I'm gonna check to see if I have them. I might already have them, because like, I've bought so much shit over the years from Steam In and never played. Goodbye. You help a group of quirky ghosts overcome various obstacles and conundrums by reorganizing the level as you like, like, it sounds familiar. Moving one tile will also push the surrounding tiles. elements are only moved around 
but never remove. So just like a Rubik's Cube, the puzzles never end up in a state where you can't solve them. Characters I have to discover one of the games here weird and how to move on while trying to escape the grasp the Black of an World evil Legacy who doesn't know how to let go. Let's see. How to say goodbye tells a story of loss and grief, but we intend the experience to be as gentle, kind, and positive as possible. I seem to have the first one then. Like, that's the only one I have. If this sounds like something that you would be interested in, please wish this the game. It would mean a lot to us. Thank you. Oh, they got a. Uh... I'm looking at a bundle thing. Like, the first one on the list is the Blackwell Legacy, which is what I have. I don't know if that's the actual first one or not. <laughs> oh. Hi. Well, wasn't that a great show? And a great cake, and it's all gone. And so now we have to say goodbye. I hope you liked that. I hope you liked all the games. Thank you to all the oh, developers. Oh, is that the end of it? For making such fantastic games and for bringing them here for everyone At least to they're enjoy. not ending on a Special wet fart. Special thanks to all of our generous sponsors. You've always been there for us, and we could not do this without you. It looks like Legacy might be the first one. Idea, Xbox, Nintendo, Steam, Epic Game Store. Y'all are awesome. Oh, they got a Thank bundle you. thing. Extra special thanks That's to like Dose 25 One, the off. Magic Man, for supplying all the beats and sound effects and tunes you hear in every summer Game Fest edition of Day of the Devs. We couldn't have done any of this without you, or at least it'd be really quiet uh, and kind of suck. We're not done with the Day of the Devs 10th anniversary just yet. If you go to dayofthedevs.com and sign up for our newsletter, you will be amongst the first to hear about all the excitement that's to come this year. Uh, other than that, thank you so much to everybody who watched, and we'll see you next year. Bye. I wish you could, like, wish list, like, we'll uh, bundles. Aha, It'd make it so it much over, easier. But it is actually not. Day of the Devs continues with a special after-party performance by the one and only Peter Berkman of Anamanaguchi fame. He's debuting new music from a game you've probably never heard of. It's called Little Nemo and the Guardians of Slumberland. And the reason you haven't heard of it is because it's debuting on Kickstarter at this very freaking moment. Enjoy, see you later. Thanks for tuning in to Day of the Devs, Summer Game Fest edition, bye. Oh, they're really going just straight into it, huh? I swear, if I get like a copyright strike or whatever the fuck, Since you recommend them, Ugh. and I've already got the first one, might as well get the rest of them. And the bundle's on sale, so I'm gonna do it right now before I forget. Uh, uh. Right, isn't this adorable? And we're on the ocean, okay. Now we're not on. What? That's when you know you're an artist. When you make a music video where you're literally playing a little mini keyboard with your your laptop and you're traveling around the world with it. <laughs> Stream it. <laughs> well, depending on how tired I am after the Devolver Digital, if that's the last one, I'll probably stream it. I just gotta install it. Because I think I already have the first one, so... I'm just gonna go ahead and get the bundle. It is a baby piano. It's a little, it's a little thing. Uh, hopefully I didn't just mess up the stream. Steam. Open up.
really, Steam? The the first featured and recommended game in my face is the fucking Call of Duty one. I don't care. I'm not paying for that. Like, I'll play it if it's on Game Pass and I don't have to full price pay for it. But otherwise, I don't care. This this little indie thing like looks cute, but it's also cool that they're like showcasing like the music and the artists and, and, so, and stuff. You don't really see that a lot with indies because they usually don't like either have like the money for it or PR for it or something. Carter, come on. Oh my god, what's going on? Shit got real in the music. Oh my god. Are you okay? The struggle.
Okay, Steam is being weird. Like, I tried to buy it and it's being weird. It's like pending transaction. Ugh. Well, at least they didn't end it on a wet fart. Like, I'm happy for them. They know their audience. Start Steam. The Games and Online Harassment Hotline is a text message based, anonymous, and yeah, confidential Steam is being emotional weird. support hotline. And it's created specifically for the gaming community. Because we're gamers and creators, and we want to help each other. So, how does it work? Well, you text us and we listen. Our hotline is 100% anonymous. We can talk about anything you need to, and only what you want to. The Games and Online Harassment Hotline is an inclusive resource for anyone, no matter how you identify. If you feel that you need emotional support, you can start right now by texting SUPPORT to 23368, and our qualified responders will be there to listen to you, free of charge. Reach out, get help, and let's make this community a better place to work and play. Look at that. Look at that. They ended with... Great music from an indie game, a little video, and a nice little little thing to help people out. And what did what did the main show do? Ended on a wet, embarrassing fart.